everybody. Welcome to The Late Show. My name is Scott Kelby, <laughs> and guess who's here? Eric and Eric. It's the Two Eric Show, and we're joined by Mr. Terry White. Now, let's do the proper introductions. To my left, Mr. Eric Kuna. Eric, good to have you with us. Hey, nice to have. Nice to be here. <laughs> How are things yeah. in Rocket <laughs> Photography Land? Oh, they're great. They're great, you know. All right. right. Better late than never, right? Better late than never. All right. <laughs> and also, to my right, photographer extraordinaire. He's the human trader hitch. <laughs> a beautiful man. <laughs> a can of ham. <laughs> and, did you like that one? Uh, yeah, that was good. All right, thanks. <laughs> and kind of day. he was briefly uh, debuted today in our Photoshop World webcast, Eric Egley. Eric, good to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. How you doing, Absolutely. man? Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely All right. great. So let me tell you why we're, we're always happy to have Eric. This is your second time on the grid, second right? Second time, yes. Second time on the grid. But we're always happy to have you here, especially when you brought a kick butt giveaway. Yes, I do. We're, yeah. We've got an amazing giveaway today. Now, we have multiple giveaways because, of course, we're going to give away a platypod, world's greatest accessory. But we're going to give away some lighting, and it's a really unique type of lighting. Can you tell yeah, us about your awesome giveaway? So yes, this indeed. is I'm from the folks at Westcott. I'm grab it here. Hold on. So this Check our, this out. This is our new Solix. Okay, it's been out for about six months. Here, let's get this mic where yeah, you are. There you go. Grab it. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is a daylight balanced LED. Got a nice. diffusion disc that comes on the front. All magnetic. It's about 2200 lux. It's all magnetic. All magnetic. 2200 lux, not 2200 bucks, right? No, lux. not 2200 bucks. Okay, <laughs> yes. lux. <laughs> also and comes mm. with barn doors. Comes okay. with barn doors. And it also has a tether tools uh, strap that we partnered up with them to hold the power brick to the stand. So it's ah. not flopping around or on the ground or now, anything like that. But and what's the what's the way you're missing a really cool thing about it? Comes, it. it comes with the case, too. It's an integrated what? What's the integrated yes, thing? Yes, indeed. Check this out. Integrated speed ring. So you can literally mm. put any softbox, strip, light, octobank. Nice. Right Put on there. Ever you, don't you want need an it. extra speed ring. It's right in, right integrated. Through. Right. The future so, of lighting yeah, is cool LED light. and look. That's a bad. Very simple controls too. A a double down. word. Now uh, speaking down. of uh, lux or box, how much is one of those? Four forty nine. And that includes everything you see here. All right. For all those and lux. You can use it on video too because it has a very quiet, quiet. Oh frame. yeah. Right. And yeah. it's and it's continuous lighting. Continuous LED. Lighting. Yep. What you see right, is right, so you right. can use it for still or video. Yep. We're giving it away today on the show. We are. Who makes it? FJ Wish FJ Wish God. Yeah. Rocks. Which, anyway, which, we're which being a photographer, I am also the Chief Product and Brand Officer for FJ Westcott. He's the Chief Product and Brand Officer for FJ Westcott. <laughs> We've got a great topic. we got great giveaways. So we are giving away our platypods today. We're giving away a platypod ultra. Mm -hmm. It's ultra cool. Everybody mm -hmm. wants one of these. And that I would, one of the coolest if everybody things. didn't already have one of these, I would mention it on today's show because we have an amazing topic for today. Well, we're going to give away an ultra and it's big brother, the Max, for maximum love, the Platypod Max. These are what you use instead of a tripod, because everyone hates tripods, but everyone loves. Well, photographers like tripods. The, the public, security guards in particular, hate them on a crazy level. And we're going to give away my brand new book, which is on press and is so has been on press now for like two weeks. I imagine it will be hitting bookstores very, very soon. I think within the next two weeks, it'll be hitting yep. bookstores. Uh, my new book on Lightroom Classics. So it is my Lightroom Classic book. Biggest update I've done on this book in many, many years, probably since it was first written 11 years ago. All the new stuff's in there, the new profiles, all the cool stuff. We knew it was coming, so we held the book until they came out. And now it's out. And yay. Okay. So well, there's we that. Some, uh, we have some hellos coming in here. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, so we got Erica from Utah saying uh, Utah in the house. Then we got uh, Lila from South Carolina. And then uh, look at Jerry's comment down there. Phew, I thought my Wednesday afternoon was about to be ruined, the grid but the grid arrived and saved it. It's what so. we do. It's how we there roll. We <laughs> and then we got Sharon from Arkansas and Ben... Um, is from Happy Wednesday. Nottingham. Not, yeah, a, yeah, a wet Nottingham. It's Ben and Bridget. Nottingham. Are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. Ben and Bridget. You're looking forward to another great episode? I'm not sure we've had a great episode yet. <laughs> so this would be the first. But I think we'll we have. We'll Let try. me tell you what. I think we have a good one. We have a very special guest joining us via Skype. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. There he is, Terry White. Yeah. Hey. hey, everybody. What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the grid. Did I miss that <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, Scott. Hey, Eric. Hey, Eric. What's going well, on, he's... everybody? Oh, they can't hear me. That's right. So I'm going to talk about them while they can't hear me. They're, they're cool guys, but you know, I'm going to make jokes along the way. So hi, everybody. Well, it's hey, good. Terry. Good to have you here, Terry. So uh, we asked Terry to be here today because we have a very special topic. So our topic today is things you ought to know. Now, what does that mean? So things you ought to know can mean anything from techniques you ought to know about, tips you ought to know about, products you ought to know about, people that you ought to follow that you ought to know about, like photographers you ought to know about, books you ought to know about, apps you ought to know about, anything in the wide world of sports that, that you would tell a friend. So if you're sitting in a bar and go, hey, you know, you ought to, you ought to try that. You ought to, have you following this? Are you following her? Or whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what our show's about. So we've all gotten together some of our favorite things. And of course, when it comes to knowing cool stuff, I swear, Terry White is the bottom line on cool stuff. He is just, he's a gadget freak and a photographer and a designer. He's like an incredibly talented guy and he has a lot of money. So <laughs> you put all, you right put all that together. It's like a perfect storm. <laughs> you put all <laughs> that together go. and it's a perfect storm. And he has he lives in a split level house, clearly. Okay. Split <laughs> One level. Side has a studio One side's on a it. studio. And then a bunch of stuff on the floor. And the stuff doesn't fall. <laughs> yeah. It just sits there really? like it doesn't slide down or anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Terry, you want to kick us off with something cool? Yeah, I can do that. All right, so one of the cool things as a photographer you should always have is a way to back up your photos when you're on the go. This device is the My Passport Wireless. Now it's upgraded. Here's the old one. This one's a terabyte. It's wireless, but what makes it different than any other hard drive? It has a built-in SD slot, and Ooh. the new one has the same thing. It's got a built-in SD slot as well. What's the difference between these two besides this one? being bigger and heavier. This one's an SSD, so it's way, way faster. Now, what's wireless? They're both wireless um, drives or hotspots, not internet hotspots, but drives that you don't have to plug in a wire and get your media off of or onto. The other thing is great about this is they don't have to be connected to a computer. So you're out in the field, you shoot a car, don't erase the car, but before you put the card away, Put it in the SD slot, and it'll automatically copy the card onto the drive. Take the card back out, put it away, put the new card in the camera, and now your uh, card's backed up in the field. That's Dang. Nice. All yeah, right. Well good. done. You started us off strong. Of course, that yeah, cost yeah. me some money because now I have to get one of those. But uh, thank <laughs> you, Terry. That's great. I should be out in the field without a way to back up the card. And not having to bring a computer even makes it better. That does make it better. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's funny that you mentioned that, Terry, because I actually have people ask me that question. Like, what do you use? Oh, yeah. What do you use? And I, I don't have a good answer for that because literally I always take my laptop everywhere I go. Yep. So that's great. Thank you very much, Terry. All right. Uh, and, and we're stick around, Terry, because we're going to come back to you again and again and again. <laughs> All right. I Mr. Kuna. Yeah. I'm going to have to use last names here. Mr. Right. Kuna, what do we got? <laughs> Well, I got a well. One thing we we just talked about, but I can tell you that this is this is a big tip for people, um, you know, taking photography. Uh, you know, if you want to up your game, change your game, is something like the platypod or something like a monopod uh, to change your perspective, change your angle. Um, this is something that I think has changed my photography, um, especially because you know, um, with the stuff that I um, you know shoot, I shoot a lot of rockets. But you could see like. Can you show um, us a picture too? Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so like, actually, this desktop background's one. But um, so let's see here. Let me grab some pictures. So like, well, that's not a good one. I gotta get to a good one. So there like that, you go. that photo. So because I'm on a platypod and because I'm so low to the ground, I actually get a lot of the floor ground. And a lot of these rocket, you know, pads, they're very boring. They're just grass with the, you know, just that's your foreground. But getting low to the ground, changing that perspective, it also um, 
let you here. Let me uh, grab another one um, if I could. Um, like that, where you're, you're nice. really low, mm -hmm. you're able to shoot up high, you're mm -hmm. able to change your perspective. If you're not low, low to the ground, and like uh, we were just up in New York City, that this is a uh, a great example right here, where on the ground. Yeah. We're literally mm -hmm. on the ground, shooting low, coming up makes high. Makes everything look so it big. It makes everything look so big and so pronounced, you know. So that's one of the, the, the tips is to, is to kind of start looking at ways to put your camera low, put your camera high. You don't have to have a platypod. The platypod just makes your life a heck of a lot easier because you can throw it down, put a trigger on there, do something like that. Or the same thing with a monopod. You can actually extend it up, be shooting really high and tilting your camera down. And that really helps to kind of just change the perspective on things. You know, so that's really my tip is, you know, just All right. change that perspective. Well, I, I have a follow-up tip for that, but I'm, I'm going to want Eric, mm -hmm. the other Eric, the Mr. Other. Egley, to yes. go with one of his next because I do have a follow-up tip on that, but I'm going to mm -hmm. pull up a slide that's going to help me demonstrate because it, it does go along with what you said because my first one was a thing and then it was a technique. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's going to build on what he just said. But I totally agree. All right, what do you got? I mean, one of the things that I've found to be a great tool for me is the uh, Tether Tools t table. Especially the, the arrow field. table? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's fantastic because uh, my clients always wanted to see exactly what I'm shooting while I'm shooting it. Okay, and you can you can put your laptop on there. And, of and course it mounts you can right on a tripod, right? right on a tripod. Right, I mean, you could do it on a tripod leg if you, uh, if you want with a magic arm or something like that. And hey, I wonder if Juan I mean, would go grab us one. It rolls, Juan. <laughs> it rolls. It rolls. <laughs> the uh, the rolling the we have a rig in the studio, so the studio is right next door. I think it's all unplugged and ready to go. But if not, just it it, it rolls. I yeah. I went and got the wheels for it. Oh, okay. Now okay. Uh, in the field, you would just use a tripod. Right. But when it comes right. in here, it'll make a whole lot more difference. But oh yeah, it's, but Juan it's, it's Juan's fantastic. cruising over there and he's going to check fantastic. it out. Fantastic. I mean, uh, one of the follow ups to Eric, I, I, you know, because uh, one of the things that I always talk about is like being a fly on the wall. You know, mm -hmm. try and visualize, you know, the angles before you actually get the camera yep. and start shooting, yeah. you know, because that's really important because everybody tends to want to shoot for my level. Oh, and, yeah. and, and that's where every amateur in the world starts. Shoots, right? Yeah, right. that's where everybody starts. And, and there, you know, you can make it so much more interesting to sort of just changing that perspective just, just, just a little. Yeah. Even shooting get dirty. from your hip or, you know, just kind of going Don't worry down about there. getting your clothes yeah. dirty. Just. You know, yeah. scurry on the ground and see what you see. Oh, yeah. You, know, you should see stuff. when I, I'm out on those rock, those pads. I'm usually laying on the ground oh, yeah, all the time. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I'm still looking for my example here, but but Juan is, here he comes. Oh, yeah, there He's you go. He's going to roll it in. Oh, now, Juan go. hates to be yep. on camera. Yep, yep, yep. But here. <laughs> it just here, magically will roll it'll, in. It'll roll. Now we'll, we'll get a good shot of it. Yeah, there you go. But so there's, here is the rig here. Well, we have to get it from a different camera. He'll, but, get uh, he'll get it from the jib. He'll get it from the jib. He's a jibby kind of guy. And you put your laptop right on that table yeah. right there. Right. And there's a little so, strap that straps it down. A, yep, there's yeah. a little strap that you get. And now, by the way, I, this is an important uh, distinction. And this is the tip of the day. The strap doesn't come with it. You have to buy the strap separately. Really? Yeah. Buy the strap. I learned the hard way. Get the strap. It do not do not buy that table uh, without buying that extra. I think it's 22 bucks. You hmm. buy that strap and it keeps your laptop from from going oh, off. Yeah, now the wheels on the bottom are a great investment because here's why: if you're in the studio and you use this, when you want to move, like like yesterday we were doing a shoot and I would be in one second and I need to go back eight feet or move forward. Mm -hmm. You have to get a friend, pick it up, and right. move it. Well, if one of you is off angle. That's when your laptop oh, slides yeah, definitely. off. Yeah, you With wheels, careful. it just rolls. It's, I think it's 79 mm -hmm. bucks for the wheels. Totally worth it. There's the mm -hmm. wheels right there. Ooh, what a nice. There you go. There's nice some job. nice camera work there. <laughs> so those are the wheels, and it's portable. So, you know, if you're, as long as you're going to be indoors on location, it works wonderfully well. Mm -hmm. It even has a little handle grip and all. It, it's really well designed. The legs of your tripod go in there. And it's really awesome. All right, we're gonna have to go back to Terry because I, I am, uh, I still have not found my, my, the thing I wanted to show. Oh, I just did, but it'll take me a minute. <laughs> so let's go to Terry. All right, Terry, what else you got for us? Oh, what else? All right, let's reach over to the table of magic here. I've got one of the coolest things that I bought in the last year. Oh yeah. This is the Insta One or Insta Three Sixty One. 
It's a 4K 360-degree camera. So there's a um, uh, lens on or camera on both sides that so captures 360 in one shot. It also captures 4K video. You might say, well, why do I need that? I'm a photographer. I'm shooting with my DSLR or, or whatever. This is awesome for capturing those behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So people can turn and do a 360 and see the whole set that you created. Also, it's great, even if you're going to use it to maybe do an instructional video or a review or you're scouting the location and you're giving your audience, and even live stream to these, you're giving your audience the ability to not just look at one thing. They can turn and pan and look at whatever they want, whenever they want. So this is the latest, one of their latest versions. We've got several. Uh, but the Insta 361 is my favorite new non DSLR camera. Well, that's one thing off my list because I had that same thing on my list because I love that thing too. And that, it is so great. It's like uh, Terry was saying, the other thing that um, I think is really cool about it is being able to take like uh, selfies because you could take a selfie, but you're also taking the picture of what you're looking at in the selfie. So it's one of those ah. things. Where, and I've, I've really started to experiment with when you take a shot, you can actually even, um, you know, like zoom out and do like the the world like the world view of it yep. or kind of mm -hmm. like that so there's really some really cool how, stuff we can do how with do it. other people see this like it how will they see it do they need special software eric well they don't necessarily i mean or you can they see it on facebook they can see it on facebook it's built into you facebook. can actually pull out stills again from it you can yep. you can uh edit in uh photoshop now you mm -hmm. can edit in photoshop so i mean but, but this is this is an important thing to note for you guys watching if you make a 360 and you put it on Facebook. Yeah, it works natively in Facebook. They can click yeah, on it cool. and move around. Well, in they Facebook. can even and um, if it's on the phone. If they're on their phone, they can actually move their phone around and, it's and see your like complete view. They don't have to have a headset. Now, right. if you have a headset, it's really cool. Yeah. Kind of takes it up a notch. Yeah, of course. But <laughs> uh, there's mm -hmm. just a lot you can do with it. A lot you can All do right. with it. All right, good one, Terry. Thank you very much. All right, I finally have mine up. So before we bring it, before we go to my screen, I want to explain because this follows up on on what Eric's thing was. So Eric's thing was talking about getting on a low perspective, and mine is was that's my second part. My first part, my very first part was this: is at some point you're going to buy a new lens. I'm not trying to get you to buy a new lens. You're going to buy one on your own. What I want to do is influence your choice. So if I was sitting in a bar, if Eric and I were sitting in a bar and he's like, man, I think I want to buy a new lens. Now, he probably owns every lens there is, but because he's been shooting Wonderful. a while. But, but if he was and he's like, man, I'm thinking of getting a new lens, I, I would go get a super wide angle. Now, a super wide angle is not a 24. That's a wide angle. It's not a 28. That's a wide angle. A super mm -hmm. wide angle on a full frame would be a 16 or a 14 or you can even go down to like a 12. Yeah, 14 is a great lens. 14 is oh, a great goodness, one. Oh, yeah. gosh. But but a, a very widely used super wide angle is a 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, you would think, how much difference? It's two two millimeter from a 14 to 16. It's huge. It's huge. You can see it. All right. All right. It's but like 10%, 20%. It, it's, you know, it's, it's like, it's like every like little a lot more. Tick. Right. All right. So my advice to you would be, first, is to go get a super wide angle. Now, once you have a super wide angle, then I want to get to the technique that Eric was talking about. Now, I'm not going to use a platypod for what I'm showing you, but because when I took the shot I'm going to show you, I didn't own a platypod. Well, this isn't the shot. This is the setup shot. So this is, let's see that shot again. This is the shot with me standing at eye level. The real secret to a super wide angle is to shoot it really low. Now I have a behind the scenes photo of me that I'm gonna show you in a moment. And all I did was, so this is a 16 millimeter, it's a 16 to 35, and I'm using a, I'm using a 16. So it's at 16. I'm gonna take two shots, one standing up, and then here's what I did. Now this is not a pretty shot, but, whoops, that's not the shot. Where did it go? There it is. So there, I get down low. So now I'm down and I laid my camera on the ground because I didn't have a platypod. Platypods were not available at this point. You're only what, six foot away from her or something? I'm like six that? foot away from her, right? And let's go back and look at the standing up. Then I get down low and I'm aiming my, 
camera up. I take a few test shots with a wide angle. You, yep. It's not. It's not hard. <laughs> it worked. You wouldn't do this with a tight, but with wide. Watch the difference in perspective when I go from standing. Mm -hmm. This is the same lens. Everything is the same. From standing, watch, to down low. Boom. Yeah, that's that's awesome. It it is night and day. Here's now look at the floor, and this is what Eric was talking about. Watch. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes from a regular shot to an epic shot with the exact same lens mm -hmm. and the same settings. Nothing changed but your perspective. And I think that's where you really get your money's worth. And by the way, the closer you are when you get down low, the bigger it makes everything look. Mm -hmm. So when you're in tight quarters, that's when you really want to use a wide angle. And it really does make a huge difference. So just want to show you one more time. Standing and then getting down low. All the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really a technique thing. Well, it's two parts. That's get a super wide angle. Don't get a wide angle. A wide angle is lame. Get a super well, wide angle. You know, one thing about that shot, too, when you got down low, you have all those leading lines of the floor directing your directing eye right it. towards exactly. the, your, yeah. your subject. And that was... Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. part of the magic beautiful. of the of the uh, the wide angle. Mm -hmm. Now that I look at this shot, I think it needs a little bit of correction because those the three windows, the three stained glasses are leaning a little. I need to go. Ee, ee, ee. Yeah, that's that's one of the, one of the beauties of uh, <laughs> super wide angle. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, here's I, we're gonna we'll jump over to Mr. Eggly uh, again, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go open that in Photoshop. And we'll fix it in a minute. We'll see if it works. All right, you're up. One more piece of equipment. Whatever you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, well, it okay, can be okay, equipment gonna, if you I'm want. Gonna, I'm going to sort of take a step back in time here because I know uh, a lot of people don't use these anymore, but it's a, a staple when I shoot, and that is a light meter. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people don't use or uh, you know know how to use a light meter anymore, but it is so integral and so important. You know, it, it's one of those things that not only gives you an exact exposure, but it, it, it teaches you what your light is doing and, and the actual output and how to manipulate it to actually create great modeling effects and oh, yeah. dramatic effects with your lights. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that um, I don't think I could do without. I mean, sure, I could shoot, you know, because you got the back of your camera, you got the, the screen and everything, but I like to be exact on everything, you know, and, and that's the only way I can do it. Well, and it's really cool nowadays because they even have them where, you, you know, because sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to carry another device. Like, mm -hmm. they even have them now where they plug into oh, your iPhones right into and your Android. Android. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so you can always have it with you. But, but once you know the theory behind it and understand exactly why it's doing what it's doing, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and you can manipulate your lights accordingly at that point and uh, get some great, great effects. Yeah, but can I tell you something? Uh-oh. No, and this is going to sound like I'm, I'm knocking it, but yeah, yeah. you have to be at a certain point in your career to, to yeah. actually mm -hmm. get anything out of a light meter. Yep. Because what's, what a light meter is great for is you want to make sure that you always have the exact same lighting ratio. Well, first you have to understand what a lighting ratio is. And then you have to know which lighting ratio that you want. And then you'll be able to use it to go, okay, my background's a stop above my foreground and I know that will keep from frying the hair and then I know that I want this light to be you have to know what these things right. are so if you're a beginner at lighting and and you're going to use a light meter you're probably it's you're probably not going to use it you're mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. going to go it really is this is for an yeah. advanced person yeah. especially if you're in a production environment where like you said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it have to be exact every time you i shoot this yeah. yep. the background yeah, yeah. has to be one stop below or one stop above the mm -hmm. front and my my kicker light has to be a stop and a half low. i mean you have to know and understand lighting ratios and what they mean and all absolutely so it, it is yeah. for a particular type of user uh, and I don't use one um, because I'm a beginner. No, I don't use one because I, it's just the way I shoot. Right. And, and, right. and they're like, like Frank Duerhoff will sit here and he will argue with you until the cows come home and tell you why everyone should use oh, a light yeah, meter. Yeah, do, but yeah. li I, but I Frank <laughs> understands light at right, a really exactly. great thing. Here's, wh here's what I do. My light meter is this. I take a shot and I look at the back of the camera. And I go, it That's needs true. to be a little brighter. <laughs> hey, go watch Joe McNally and see when Joe McNally pulls out a light meter. Some of the best photographers you've ever seen, they look on the back of the camera and go, it needs to be a half a star brighter. Uh, I, I understand. And, and that's by experience. You yeah. look at the, and, and it's also by like what you like. Now, I know that technically you could take a light meter and you could 
you could cheat it. Because I, I don't like, like if I use a light mm -hmm. meter, which I have, I own a Gossin mm -hmm. and I've got a couple Siconic others. Siconic, so, I got so, a Gossin. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have them, I, I know how to use them. But I generally don't like what, what it would tell me is the proper exposure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if I were to take a picture of you and I went here and I sampled the light, and it would say you need to be at f8, and I would set it at f8. I wouldn't like the way it looks. It always looks overexposed to me. Well, I, now, see, I, one of the theories too is if you have more devices and more equipment, you can charge more. That's <laughs> true. That's, that's true. true. That's a tip. Put there that you in go. The yeah. column. There's so, a tip. That's a bonus. I don't, tip. So bonus I'm not tip. arguing with what you said. I want you to, but I, I want you to know. I want for you guys watching to mm -hmm. know oh, yeah, who is the right person absolutely. to buy one of those. But, but it's it's very good just to start learning. You know densitometry and all those good things just so you at least understand you know where it came from and and how to manipulate all right I hey mean, yo at, at the at the base you know the yo the johans out there mm -hmm. johan says hi everyone he says uh, so eric kuna is on the grid so the usual drinking word which starts with an a and ends with a zon is now active again yes if we say the word amazon amazon it's a drinking game is this your drink I, have no, I don't have a drink. Wait, you have, uh -oh. you have a drink. I don't have. You don't have a drink? Oh. It's okay. I'm good. <laughs> well, I'll drink well, two. I'll drink two for you. There you go. There you yeah, go. it's a drinking <laughs> game. Everybody does it at home. <gasps> and we, we also only drink water. We also have Emerald uh, tuning in for uh, Poland. Yeah, mm, Poland yeah. in the house. Yeah. And then uh, Lisa from Hollywood, Florida. Uh, Andrew from Portsmouth, Ohio. And then... Diego, Diego, Diego from Portugal. Yeah. All right. Hmm. So we do have a bunch of questions, oh. but I think we do need to take a break and then we come back. I like and answer that. A bunch of questions. We got questions right. and we got more stuff. And Terry's here with us. Yeah. And uh, don't go away. We're going to come back with more stuff. You ought to know. <laughs> you ought to know that. This segment of the grid is brought to you by B and H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hi everybody, we were back. Sorry, I was, I was listening to the uh, race. There you go. Race results. Anyway, and they're off. <laughs> and they're off. Big Glad weekend this weekend in uh, horse racing. It is. That's really interesting. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> so let's move on. Eric Cooney here to my left, and to my right, Eric Egley. Uh, we got some great giveaways today, and uh, we, it's going to be a fun day. We are talking uh, about what are we talking about? We are talking about uh, stuff you ought to know. Yes. You know what you ought to know? We're going to answer Cheeky Nando's question <laughs> because it's so poignant and so completely un. We had to search for the answer on the internet. Yeah, we we did look it up. So yes. Cheeky Nando's question, Eric. What is this question? His I'll question answer it. was, "What's the best photography Photoshop conference in the world?" Wow. Question mark. Well, that's a good one. We did look it up. Now there does happen to be a conference. There's only one conference on Photoshop, so. Uh, I'm going to go with Photoshop World is my answer. Oh, there it is. Ding, 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 ding. All right. It's May 31st through June 2nd. Hey, it is not too late to come. Now, can we can we mention that? Hold if on. The, yeah, I, if they go watch that webcast earlier, there was right. a code, but okay. we could probably give it away, so and they probably good. wouldn't get in trouble that all right. much all right. from so, the sponsors. So, so today we did a webcast. Uh, it was called a uh, an Insider's Guide to Photoshop World, where we kind of let people that were thinking about going or maybe already signed up kind of how it all works and what to do and some tips and stuff. Uh, and we gave a code away during that broadcast that gives you the early bird pricing, which ended last Friday. But you can use it to, for what, 24 hours or 48 hours or something? Yeah, it's a little while. Yeah, it's a day or so. Yeah. So uh, the code, if you want to do it, this is just for grid people, though. It's back. Wait, I can write it down. It's back the worst EB. code ever. It's capital B A C K. I got to so write back it. I'll write it on screen. Early bird E B. It's back the worst. Hold on. E -B. Grab that thing. Oh, yeah, it dropped. Hang on. That so was, that there was you my, go. All right, so I'm going to write it on screen cuz it's just the worst ever. It's Oh my gosh, I can barely type. Back early bird E B. E B. Early bird. There you go. Okay, that's a that's a really good code. All right, so this is the code, and you'll get the you'll get a hundred dollars off. Plus, if you're a Kelby One member, you still get a hundred bucks off. So 
but do it now. <laughs> Go do it now. There's still time, but this was for the, the webcast. Yeah. Now, yeah. the webcast will be archived. It will be up by what, tomorrow? Yep. So the webcast, if you're a Kelby One member, you can go watch it on the Kelby One site. You could actually probably go still watch it on my Facebook, Facebook page, page on the same place you're watching this probably. Yeah. You might be watching this on our live stream over but someplace else. But you could else. go to facebook.com forward slash Skelby. Yeah, my Facebook page is uh, facebook.com slash Skelby, S-K-E-L-B-Y. It is my name. I should know how to spell it. Anyway, <laughs> and, and use that code at checkout. But they're not going to let you do that forever. It's like for a day or two, so... If you want to come and join us, it's not too late. You can come. It's uh, May 31st, June and 2nd, uh, 1st and 2nd down in Orlando. It, you should come. You will love it. And we have we have a special episode of The Grid we're doing. We're oh, inviting yes. uh, our grid people to come and yeah, watch it people. live. Yeah. So you'll be behind the scenes right there on the set for the madness and the magic, for the majesty and the magnificence. That is The Grid live. Anyway, glad to have you here. Let's keep rolling. So we got we got a couple more questions that we got to answer. Besides answer those questions. Besides Nan, Nan that was a good uh, one for Nando. So this though. one is actually for Cheeky. Terry. I think is probably what this question we best answered was. How much was that wireless drive? So Terry, how much was that drive? My things on the floor. I have no idea. Let's just pull this back up. All right. So the drive vary in price depending on capacity, just like anything else. Um, that particular one's not cheap because it's a terabyte. Yep. And it's because I use it for other things besides backup. But, but, you know, besides that, the, the follow-up is somebody asked, uh, does that Passport have a sl slot for SQD cards? Oh, we, we lost, Terry? lost Terry. We lost Terry. Well, That's so sad. I don't know, but I bet we can, we'll Google it. We'll All right, figure it out. a couple more shout outs here. Jane says, I can't wait for Photoshop World. It's my first time attending. Ooh, we're glad to have you there, Jane. And Christy Kuna. I says, imagine that's Dan. Carrie, so it's that's... not Christy. Oh, but it's, yeah. hey, hey, Carrie. No, it wouldn't be Christy. <laughs> it would be Carrie. It uh, comes under the account of Christy, mom's account. All right. <laughs> Hi, Dad. <laughs> um, so let's see what other questions we got. Um, question for Scott uh, What's your favorite use of your Platypod sports? Question mark. Um, I've been using it a lot for travel. Uh, mm -hmm. I do like it for sports. I use it for player intros, but after that, you really can't use it a whole bunch more. Uh, I've used it in the end zone a couple times for football. Um, but I would think right now I'm, I'm using it like I just spent a whole, uh, a whole day and a half in New York <laughs> shooting all over the place. And no one ever stopped me. I put that platypod down in places that you are sworn never to put a. And security guards. I mean, were we were like, at, oh, like yeah. where oh, like military God. guards are, right? Yeah, you're literally military guards are there, and they just look at it and go, eh, eh whatever, whatever. <laughs> but if I put one leg of a tripod down, they would just shoot oh, me yeah. right there. Thank you. Um, so Lynn's asking, follow, kind of along the same lines. Okay. Uh, when you shoot from the ground, do you tether it? Uh, I do if I can. So I, I've got some behind-the-scenes mm -hmm. shots of me. In fact, I think I might even have it right here. Hang on. Of me yeah. tethering from the ground, which is the best place to tether. Here it is. Hold on. Wait till I get the slide up, will you, before you broadcast it? Hey, Jesus. <laughs> That's me tethering on the ground. Now, this was before I had a platypod, so it wasn't, it wasn't as low as I wanted to be. But this is a super wide angle. It's a 16 so watch, here it is again. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just changing that perspective. It changes yeah, everything. Yeah. So right? I mean, the other thing you can do, no you leading know, lines, leading lines with leading the um, shooting low like that with tethered is there are things like uh, a lot of the newer cameras, like even yours that you were shooting with, has wire wireless built in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you can see the preview through your wireless yep. if it's connected. Mm -hmm. So that's one yep. way to do it where you can shoot tethered. Um, the other thing with the platypod is a lot of times just putting it on the ground, adjusting your angle, taking a shot, then picking it up and looking at it and mm -hmm. seeing do I have to adjust it. So mm -hmm. there's a bunch of different ways to shoot with it. Um, and then hey, yeah, Paula has a question. Yeah, Paula's asking, do you use? Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's a ball head, ball head? Uh, with your platypod. Yes, you have to use a ball head. Yeah. It's designed to be used with a ball head. If not, your 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 camera will just sit straight like this. You have to be able to tilt it up, or you'll get a really good shot of your platypod. So yes, uh, can I recommend one? I would get the, it's the Oban. Yes, it's the Oban one the that's Oban really, one. if you go to B&H and you type in Oban 
ball head. I bet it'll be one no, of the first coins no, that comes up. No, what you want to type is, it's you can get on B and H. You, oh, you can, can get the the package. You can get a package that with comes the with it. With the the platypod. Pod. So I'm going to go to B and H. Hold on. Greatest store in the world, by the way. There it is, the BE117. Oh my goodness, it was right That's there. That's it, BE117, 8495. A great, a great little ball yep. head. But you can buy, you can buy it bundled with the a platypod. platypod yeah. So just go platypod plus. Uh, do a T. Plat. Oh, plat. Oh yes. Plat Y pod. Plat Y pod. Plus Obin. And you get the nothing. Where is it? Uh oh. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Hold on, it's there. Am I spelling it right? P L A T Y P O D. Yeah. Try uh, plus with... ball head? Let's try that. But it is. There, there it, it is. is. There, there it is. And it's the B E 117 right there. They just didn't have Obin in the, in the description. Oh, they didn't have Obin. They just had mm. the. Oh. Mm. Oh. Now, here's a cheaper one. This is the Benro. The Benro gets it down to 104, and the other one... Get, but can I say this? I don't have any, I don't have any experience with the Benro. Yeah, so if you just money. wanted... The Benro you can use with your regular tripod and all. It's like a yeah. good... That's a mm -hmm. good ball head for the money. 89 bucks for a good ball head is really cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot only imagine... Oh, wait. Now, that's with the Pro, isn't it? Oh, so this is... Look, it's the, it's the Max. Yeah, it's the, the Max. big boy. Then this is the one I'm showing is with a smaller one, so that's for yep. the ultra. Okay, so anyway, they're on B and H. You can buy that those as a, as a thing. All right, uh, how long has it been since we've been? Oh, Terry dropped off, didn't he? No, yeah. but he was just answering a question. He didn't have it. Let's get let's get back with Terry. Can we get back with Terry for another tip? Because Terry's very no, tippy. He's gone. He's, <laughs> he's gone like gone for good. We're trying. He went to go get something to eat. No technical, technical difficulties. Difficulty. We're still working on it. We're still working on it. We got a question from Pernil Olson, I guess it is. Yes. Um, they're asking, um, I'm going on a safari trip this year, and I'm a new photographer. I have a Canon EOS 77D uh, and two lenses, a 28 to 135, 70 to 300. I'm hoping one or three of my pictures for my safari trip can uh, be used as art in my living room wall. Do you have any great advice for me? Something I need to know. Yes. You need a longer lens. So... Even though you're using a crop sensor body, you're not going to be happy with the 300. You're going to spend your whole safari going, I'm just not quite close as I want to be. Yeah. Go to lenspro2go.com and rent the, let me see if I can tell you what it is. It's the, it's the Sigma. It's like 100 to 500. Uh, well, yeah, there's a Sigma 100. To, I think it's 150 to 600. Yeah, or something this, like that. Yeah. There's a but, Sigma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the rocket so, guys use that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if you tell Lens Pro to go what what body you have, tell them you want to tell them you're going on safari and you want like a 600, but you don't want some big 600 that's this long. You want a little short 600 that's lightweight and easy to carry and all that kind of stuff. But you're not going to be happy with that 300. All the animals are going to be this big in your shot and you want them this big in it's your this shot. This one, mm -hmm. the Tamron it's, 150 to or, 600, or the Tamron 150 to 600. That one. Yeah, the Tamron one. That's it. Yeah, you can go rent that. You can you rent know? it. Mm -hmm. Yep, right there. And that's going to get you really close to that yeah. crop sensor. Yeah, you want, you want that 600. And you because you're going to be shooting outdoors, you're going to shoot wildlife, the 5 to 6.3 F-stop Yeah, that's not going to stop you. Yeah, get, mm -hmm. I go with something like that. Yep. All right, now that's tip number one. Tip number two, print it on canvas. Just straight up print it on canvas. Yeah, it's just going to look better. It's going to look better. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you two options for canvas. Option number one is I want a phenomenal canvas. I want the best canvas money can buy. Then you'd go to... Oh, we got Terry back. That's good. Go to... Their name is escaping me. Come on. They're where Artistic I get... Photo Artistic Photo Canvas? Artistic Thank That's you, where I would ABC. Go. They do the highest quality canvases you're going to find. If high quality is not your, your thing and you want a huge canvas <laughs> at dirt cheap prices, go to canvasdiscount.com. Now, you got to sign up for their newsletter. Quality, cheap. 
It's yeah. okay. It, it's there. Mm -hmm. And you and you know what? You'll go, hey, that looks it's pretty okay. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Now, it will be, you can get usually 90% off a list. You think I'm making it up. You can get 90% off the list. You'll get a 24 by 36 for like $25. I'm not kidding. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. They'll, they'll, now, oh, it's, it's what, what they do is you got to sign up for their no, newsletter. Good. Yeah. And they'll send Goodness. you and they'll go, we have it's these. Good. They'll have three sizes. They'll say, we got three sizes and it's a 24 by 36 or a 40 by 60, but you'll get a 40 by 60 for like $69. Oh, God. And it's not bad. It's not awesome. You're not going to be, it's not going to bring you to tears. That, that's the thing is if you're hanging something in your living room, you've gone over to Africa to a safari and you've rented a lens and taken over your lenses, probably go to an artistic photo canvas. At that saying, point, yeah, I'm just saying, probably do that. It depends on however, what your budget is. If you however, go, that's a good uh, alternative. You spend all that money on the safari. Yeah. Well, here's what's going to happen. Maybe. Well, no, Maybe. because really good canvases are really expensive. And here's mm -hmm. where you're going to wind up. Yeah. You're going to go, do I want a really, really big one that looks pretty darn good? Or do I want, I'll get a smaller one point. that looks stunning. You want a big one. And you're going to mm -hmm. go with the big one. And so you anyway, want a big one. I, I wanted to tell you about them both. They're both, I've, I've, I've bought canvases from both of them for different reasons. But if I was going to sell a canvas to somebody, artistic photo canvas every mm -hmm. time. If I just want to put something on the wall, you know, that, because it, I want you to think about this. This is an important distinction. You know mm -hmm. this. Mm-hmm. If it's big, you you view it from a distance. Oh, yeah. Right. You view it, like if it's big, you view it from six to eight feet or 12 feet away. Mm -hmm. So in your home, hanging behind your couch, hanging on a, behind the, the fireplace, people will walk in and go, oh, that's amazing, it's so big, it's great. If you walk yeah. up close, you're gonna go. You want the oh, impact yeah. of it being big. So the impact will sometimes override the quality. But yeah. if you're gonna put it someplace where people can walk right up to it and it's gonna be this big, you better go to APC, mm -hmm. Artistic Photo Canvas. Okay, there you go. we got Terry back. That's good news. Yeah, so we got another uh, there he tip is. from Hi, Terry. Terry. Or another thing from Terry. Hey, hey wait, is there, a different, is there a different background now? He's moved houses. Have you, He's moved <laughs> houses. <laughs> Went up to the other studio. Oh, to the Terry. other studio. <laughs> well, a couple things. Um, it, you know, one of the things we, we were just talking about, the platter pot, which I love. Um, definitely want a ball head for it. Otherwise, like you said, you'd be shooting your feet or shooting the, the platypod itself. <laughs> but sometimes, even with the platypod, you just don't have anything to set it on. Or you're, you're in a weird spot where it's just not conducive to put it down somewhere. This is the next best thing. It's uh, something I carry. Now, this is not for a big heavy DSLR. Use the platypod for that. That's a better option. So this is a little uh, flexible tripod from the folks over at Archon. Archon uh, creates all kinds of mounts for your smartphone and tablets and stuff like that. But they is one of their best-selling products because, A, it's only like 20-something bucks. And, B, it's lightweight. It weighs nothing. Uh, it's got a quarter 20 on it, which detaches. If I do this right, oh, this is brand new. I haven't even unscrewed this one yet. Um, there we go. This comes off, so it's easy to, to attach to your camera or light or point and shoot or whatever. And it even comes with a little mount for your smartphone. So again, if you're trying to capture that uh, behind the scenes shot, that behind the scenes video, you're shooting with your DSLR, you're shooting with a better camera, but you just need to mount something quick, wrap it around a tree, wrap it around a pole. This is a, a great tripod for that. Thank you. Speaking oh, of sorry. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. hey, one more, uh -oh. or I'll do it later if you want. No, 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 do it now. Cause I got, I got a question, right. a follow-up question for you. All right, one more, and this, again, because I'm big on behind the scenes. Uh, now, many of you probably know what this is. It's a Mavic <laughs> Air drone. And one of the great things Two about things the Mavic Air being so easy, light, and fun to fly is that it, it's great if you're going to fly it in an area where you can get a great landscape and a mountain and waterfalls and Iceland and all the cool stuff I've done with drones. But it's also really cool to fly it like up 20 feet and capture mm -hmm. shot video that you normally wouldn't be able to get because you just can't get that mm -hmm. extra 20 or 30 feet up. You don't have to fly it 400 feet up. You fly it just 20, 30, or 40 feet up and have it circle you while you're shooting or have it circle your subject and capture a great behind-the-scenes video. Totally right, agree. Scott, I think low is the most unused elevation for... 
four drones mm -hmm. flying them yeah. out. Yeah, everybody right. thinks you just send it way up. Hey, Terry, while I have you, I want to I want to read you a question that I think you'll have a great answer for from Yvonne. Uh, they ask, uh, please tell me which is the best backpack. Not a heavy one. They want to use a it's a Canon 1D. Uh, an EOS 1D with a 70 to 200 and maybe another smaller lens. What's a, what's your favorite backpack, Terry? Here's the thing. You're going to get a backpack no matter who makes it. And you're going to take it out of the box. It's going to be so light. It's going to be so amazing. You're going to be like, oh, my God, this thing doesn't weigh anything. And as soon as you take it out of the box, it just starts to grow and, and add weight to itself. It just becomes heavy for no reason, even if you haven't put anything in it yet. I'm joking. But backpacks are never, they're never light. They're never, they never end up being the weight that you think they should be. So my favorite backpack is actually from uh, Think Tank. Think Tank makes a backpack. It's called a Streetwalker. Don't, don't shoot the messenger. What? That is the name of the backpack. Uh, it's great for carrying <laughs> a modest amount of gear and a laptop or ta tablet with it. So it's not the smallest backpack. But it's a great backpack for carrying the stuff that you'd really want to carry. If you're looking for something smaller and lighter, they do make smaller ones. But my favorite bags in general are Think Tank bags. Yeah, they, they do make wonderful, wonderful bags. All right, thanks. In fact, uh, Terry, today on our webcast, we gave away two Think Tank bags. We gave the Retrospective 10 and the Retrospective 20 away mm -hmm. to some lucky folks Oops. watching us live. And now, Scott, you have a you have a sling bag that you love, though. Oh, I love that sling bag. I it's it's what I used uh, for my New York yep. trip and for mm. Venice. And that sling yeah. bag, it is a uh, it's called a something twenty slingy thing. Give me a minute to look it up. We're gonna ha have Eric share another one. Uh, Eric Egley share another one for you. But Terry, stick around. We got we got we got more from you coming up. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, um, we talked a little bit about apps, and this sort of goes um, a little bit with uh, uh, one of the other tips. But well, you were telling me about this app. Well, I got, I got. Oh, you want me to talk about Artemis? Artemis is a great app. Oh, I, I, I uh, thought uh, you were. That's what I thought you were going to talk about. Yeah, there's a couple that I use, but um, Artemis is one. That's one that you uh, were talking about. We were talking about this yesterday. Um, and it's used by film people mostly, but when you're doing scouting. Uh, expeditions with clients and such or mm -hmm. just you know trying to find a spot to shoot and you don't want to carry all your gear around uh, what this app does it, it allows you to plug in the camera that you're using along with the selection of lenses and you can actually then capture that proportion um, in a series of photos on your iPhone and use them as a storyboard or whatever else you want to prepare right here? for your this shoot. One? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. So there's some pictures. No, it's a, it's a great, great app. All right, so so you basically say I'm using a 85, and it's it crops it to 85. It'll, crop it It'll to show an you an 85, yep. and then so you'll see That's what great. you would get if you came back to that location with your DSLR. <laughs> right, exactly, and you can plug in everything from a Red to a Sony uh, video cam. You know, whatever uh, DSLR you use, everything is right in there. So you know exactly what you're going to get when you get get on location. Very cool. You know, what was I very, looking very up? Cool. I was supposed to look up something. Oh, your sling bag. Thank you. <laughs> I went completely blank. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, I've used that quite a bit uh, walking around with clients and, and uh, scouting locations. And they, they love it because I can just email the yeah. images right to them from my phone. And That's then awesome. they can put it into their layouts and go from there. You know, prepare for the shoot. So, yeah, uh, it's great. Um, the one that I was gonna mention uh, was uh, Easy Release. Oh, for and, like model releases. Yeah, and stuff? It's, a, yeah. it's a model release, and you can use that on your iPhone or your iPad, and you don't have to carry any paper around. And the beauty of it, for for my workflow anyway, is it'll email it to you and the talent after they sign, and then you can put it right in the job folder, so you don't have to keep a paper trail it's it's right in the job folder and you know i always suggest getting a model release for literally anybody you shoot um just to cover your bases 
uh, essentially. But it's it's great because you can custom customize your model release to. You can also the, you take know, a picture your, of the person that you yes, took, so they can't a go. Picture. That wasn't me. I didn't yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's you. And it has a spot for witness. You know, for a witness to witness sign. Witness protection program. Oh, yeah. It enters them in that. <laughs> Indeed. Oh yeah. Indeed. So that's a great, great app. I mean, you know, these apps are are not the dollar ninety nine apps. They, they cost a little bit more, but they're they're well worth it. Uh, absolutely. All right. I found I found the bag I was talking about. The Think Tank Photo Turnstile. Uh, they make a ten and a twenty, and they're just based on their size. But it, it's wonderful. It holds a tablet. It holds a DSLR. Three lenses. I, I have it configured to hold two. You tons of stuff in there. I had a platypod in there, a ball head, yeah. seventy to two hundred. I've got a battery. I mean, it, it holds everything. Yeah, I had ND filters in their cases. They just, I had they, everything. They know what's going you on. Had a this wide is, angle. They this create is, great. I should cases. get an affiliate link from Think Tank no for this kid. bag. I probably sold six million. <laughs> All right. So uh, I do have a tip, though. <laughs> Pardon me. I have a tip, but first I shall drink some grid water, which is the best water in the world. That's wonderful. All right. I have a great tip for you. So this is a, you know what you ought to know? I would say this is a, you know what you ought to know about Instagram is this. I talk to so many people and, and, and they all kind of say the same thing. Man, I'm, I'm just not growing my people with Instagram. I'm just not getting anywhere. And, and I start to ask them a few questions. If, if you ask a few questions, you'll quickly find out what I think their number one reason for not growing is. And that is on Instagram, we follow people that do a particular genre of photography that we like. So if you do travel photography, I, I might follow you. If you do sports photography, I might follow you. If you do landscape, I might follow you. If you do food photography. But if you do a food, fo shoot, a food shoot and then maybe a landscape shot and then maybe do you have having breakfast, yeah. you show you having breakfast and then you at your friend's wedding and then a really nice photograph. And all, I, I can't unfollow you fast enough. So uh, what, what the biggest mistake that I would say that people make is they do not pick a genre and stick to that genre. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is one of your photos shows up in somebody's feed and they go, ooh, travel photographer. And they look at a few years and they go, ooh, I like travel photography, follow. When all of a sudden one day I'm going, why am I seeing this guy's breakfast? Why am I seeing him at the beach? Mm -hmm. Why am I seeing a picture of him and his girlfriend? Unfollow, because I followed you to see travel photography, or I followed you to see portraits. When I start seeing other stuff, the only reason that you should be sharing on Instagram photos that are personal and stuff like that is if you're a celebrity. Here's the thing. Your friends, they want to see that stuff. The public doesn't. Now, if you're some big famous celebrity, if you're what's his name or what's her name, you know them. They're very famous, they have millions of followers. We care what about celebrities had for breakfast. Mm -hmm. If they go to the store and go, oh, I bought some new sneakers, we really care. We're like, ooh, look at that. Ooh, there's a cool sneakers. Because these are trendsetters. These are people who the sneakers they're buying today are the sneakers we're all going to be buying tomorrow. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. We want to know what celebrities are doing in our life. The only people that care about your Instagram feed and what you're doing in your life are your friends. You will not grow your 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 numbers beyond your friends the strangers will not follow you if you start showing your sneakers and your breakfast and, uh, unless you're a celebrity and actually that's a good point because essentially it's your online portfolio yeah it is just your online portfolio. yeah so i mean uh, that goes for your website as well you don't want to mm -hmm. have you know oh, yeah. mishmash different things because then people don't know what you're doing what what you know, yeah. your passion. I want to follow what, you what because you do you're doing best, a particular you know? thing, right? Exactly. And clients are the same way. They want to yep. They want to hire you because you do something particular great. Right. They yep. don't want to hire somebody that yep. does everything really pretty good. Right. Exactly. They want to hire somebody that specializes. Hey, we're going to take a short break. We're going to be back in just a minute, and we're going to go to Mr. Terry White for some more. We're going to go to Mr. Eric Kuna. By the way, uh, Terry has been decimating Eric's list over here, which included the Mavic Air and the uh, the other 360. one, and the 360. So you're devastating. Eric's going to be looking for stuff on the break. But until then, watch these commercials and buy everything they say to buy. We'll be right back. This segment of the grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey everybody, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna, Eric Egley, and joining us from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Terry White. All right, uh, we're going to kick things off. Oh, oh, I do want to mention, I got to mention something before we go on. Hey, Monday, Monday, 
You know what happens in Hartford, Connecticut? Hundreds of photographers are coming together on Monday in Hartford to learn Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come out too? I'll be in Hartford with my full day Lightroom seminar that is coming up on Monday. And Hundreds then, of photographers will be, be there. in Salt Lake City area about a week later, you'll yeah, be there. Yeah, if you want to go to Salt Lake after that, come on out. Am I really in there a week later? About a week. I think it's eight days later. Oh, okay. Uh, Salt the, Lake. I love Salt exactly. Lake. Exactly. I got my car stuck there once. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I went to the Salt the Salt Flats. Stupid, salt flats, stupid. Huh? You can't go there at the time of year I went, like April, and my car sunk. Oh, God. And they had a $500 <laughs> tow out because you have to have a special... <laughs> Mud cat oh, that gets man. you out. Oh, it's a long story. It was brutal. Anyway, that's text. So uh, thanks for showing that text. That's good. Anyway, um, we <laughs> come out and see me on Monday. It's 99 bucks for the full day, including a workbook and all kinds of secret stuff I can't tell you because I'll tell you that day of the seminar. But it's secret, and it's so worth it. You'll have a great time. And uh, the night before, I'm going to Plan B Burger, so join me there. All right. Best, one of the top five burger places in America is in Hartford. Plan B Burger. Nice. Unbelievable. Now, we had a good burger in San Diego. Where were we? we yeah, were San, San Diego. Diego. San Diego. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was very good. We're burger aficionados. All right. Mr. Kuna, what you got? All right. Well, I got another one here. You know, so um, if you flip over here, um, this is like illustrating like that point that I was making earlier with um, – getting down low right um in the perspective but this is the next thing that i think photographers oh, should know about right you go. so so video you're down low and you're shooting up but this this is actually a still photograph this is that photograph just animated to look like this and that was made in maybe a minute and a half maybe really? two minutes yeah i mean i've got pretty quick at it using what? five minutes so the one thing that i think a lot of photographers sh should look into and should know is uh plotograph so there's uh there's software on your iphone and your ipad as well as your desktop i've graduated to where i use it on the desktop He's because graduated to the desktop. well because you get to a certain point where there's limitations with the mm -hmm. ipad right. and the iphone mm -hmm. but it's a great thing to uh really experiment with hmm. um because now, like you're you can blowing see, this up though on social you can see like yeah i mean that's just it's very captivating cool. when people see it in the when they're scrolling and they're like yeah, why it stops is that them on instagram it's a stop and now hmm. there was something that i was you know we were talking about and it's like well yeah but you're shooting hmm. rockets like this is like made cool for stuff. it right yeah. however however i, I kind of took that as a, as a challenge or an experiment and i remember you know like so this is a this is a couple of them that i've done you know like you know where you just got like the you know, just everything just blowing mm. up, you know, <laughs> and it's just, it's I really cool. I love your blowing up rocket shots. Right? I mean, and Very people cool. love that. That's really cool. Look at that. But at the same time, you know, I think people go, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's mm. not going to apply to my genre or my style. Or is it? Or is it? Because um, I talked to Scott and I said, hey, Scott, what That's about me. what about me, you know, trying to animate some of your photos? Because I really I shoot rockets and I shoot landscape and travel, but I don't mm -hmm. I don't do as much as you do. So I started like picking off and like, well, what would it look like if you're doing like fashion, you know, and having the hair blow and stuff like that? What if you were doing <laughs> nice. like sports oh, very cool. and the people coming yeah, out of the tunnel? Really cool. What if you were doing like, you know, there's another sports one. Yeah, um, there's. This is this is my style, right? Besides rockets, mm -hmm. but you oh, got like like look at, like, that sky, like, look at the sky and the reflection. Mm. And I'm telling you, once you get that, these are you're talking minutes to produce this. Which back in the day with video, that we mm. used to be able to do this, but it would mm -hmm. take forever, you know. And you've got like look at the waves crashing on the shore and the sky moving. That's cool. You know, I mean, Very when you cool. look at these things, it's really really captivating. And when people are starting to you know scroll Wheels through your field scrolling mm. through your uh, feed and they start seeing that. I mean, you can do mm. it with, with brides and you got like the, the um, clouds moving and the veil moving and the dress moving down there. You got all that action wow, the dress happening. Is moving. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's where you can really, you know, you can really see all that, hey, can I you give know. A, can I give a plug for this? Yeah. So we have a class on Kelby One that teaches this software. This oh, that's where I learned how to use it. No, I mean, <laughs> that's exactly where I learned how to well, use it. I learned go. it last well, year. It came there out. There you go. You know, that's awesome. And it all that's where comes I learned out. it. But you know, you know, that's where you, you start learning these techniques. But I was look seeing at the wheel turning. That it applies cool. to so God. many different things. Like people keep on telling, oh, it only works on certain things. Like it applies to a lot of things. Now, 
It's not like everything. You know, it's like anything in photography. You're not going to shoot. And you're not going to turn everything to black and white, like you, you like right. you say. You know, you're not going to turn everything to black yeah, and white. With the right photo, it's but awesome. the right photo, mm -hmm. you got things mm -hmm. like reflections. But you can see, like, there's so many different ways to use what, this. What's the name of it? It's it's called Plata uh, it's called a, a plotograph. Plotograph. So um, here, I'll pull up the the software and I'll I'll show you real quick. I'm, I'm taking that one down. Uh, the software get they actually one. renamed it Plotiverse. So there's Plotiverse mm. now, whereas uh, you know that. But like, you know, if you go in here and you go into Plotograph, you can actually see in here, here's my projects that I've done. And if you see like, um, I don't know, let's go to that one. Well, here, I can show something that, this one actually was a little bit more complex, but if you look at it, I'm just putting points around the buildings, on the reflections, and then I'm animating so what the what, sky what are is the doing. So the points do lock it down from So moving? the points are just locking it down. Hmm. And oh, if, okay. you, if you look at like another one, um, that one probably not the best because it was a little bit more complicated of one, but um, like this one here, where all I'm doing is locking down the foreground right. and I'm just making the clouds move mm. and you're just animating the clouds. And honestly, I mean, that, that right there may be two minutes, you know, and then all you're doing is mm -hmm. exporting that out and that's it. Now, some hmm. of them, like I said, are more complex. Some of them are easier. You know, you can get into ones like this is that one I was showing you that I just did the other day where it's just basically like locking down certain things. I had to lock down that flag so that flag didn't move, yeah, didn't you know, that. so that like it kind of just because you want stuff that's moving and you want stuff that's not moving. Right. Um, you can see like um, things here with um, like Scott's photos, like this one where it was really cool with the wheel spinning. You can see like actually if I turn this off you can see that's what's actually happening with oh, the photo gotcha. you see the spinning of the wheels by those arrows uh -huh. spinning around mm -hmm. you get the kicking up of the dirt and then you got the lockdown of the the background and the foreground and that's all it is so it's just it's a really cool way so it's for easier photographers. than it looks, i hope <laughs> oh it's 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 super easy it really oh, is like when a, a guy <laughs> opens a 3d program goes easy you rotate easy. around no, an axis. honestly if cool. you watch if you watch um Trey Ratcliffe's class, he goes through all this. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I mention something about Trey Ratcliffe's cl class? Yeah. At the end, he has a special guest that teaches the uh, the camera version of it. Calibra. What? Yeah, and oh, it, I mean, yeah. it's it's really it's really not as complex as as it, mm -hmm. it. I know it looks like there's a lot of points there and all that, but honestly, all you're doing is clicking, 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 and putting arrows. I mean, mm -hmm. I could do one seriously in just a minute and a half. Clicking, mm -hmm. Just keep clicking. Just keep. All right, bunch of, uh, Terry. We're gonna jump over to Terry. Thank you, Eric. That mm -hmm. was really good. That was yeah. excellent. Uh, we're gonna jump over to Terry. Terry, everybody wants to know about that stupid drive that you showed. I, I wish you'd never showed it because that's all anybody wants to talk about. Terry, are you yeah. in the mountains? I am. Oh. Terry, is there <laughs> a part of your, Is that the window? Okay, so here's what they want to know. How much is uh, it? I'll, I'll just ask you random questions. So here we go. Terry, uh, how much is that wireless drive? This one is $4.99, but there are cheaper and more expensive versions depending on the capacity and whether it's an SSD, which is a solid state drive, or a regular traditional spinning drive like the original one was. So it could be, I don't, I haven't looked at the price lately, but it could be a couple hundred bucks for a regular one, up to six, eight hundred for a two terabyte SSD. So just like, think about it this way. Hard drives are going to be more expensive the faster they are and the more they hold. They're going to be less expensive the slower they are and the less right. they hold. Gotcha. So same same concept here. It's going to be a little bit more because this one's got a built-in wireless hotspot for it, as well as the built-in automated SD card. So also, it does have a USB port as well. So I got a tip from actually Scott Dusa, Dusa from uh, Nikon. Believe it or not, he's taking his Mavic Pro, plugging the USB cable from here to here, and transferring the footage directly from the Mavic Pro onto the drive. So something right. I hadn't even considered trying. Yeah, unfortunately, that last tip won't make the broadcast, Terry. We automatically scrub the word Nikon from all of our broadcasts. Uh, Legally, it's uh, legal. Uh, come on. It's, no, I'm kidding. Legal, it's a joke. I know you are. I'm going to answer a Nikon question here in just a minute, and I'm going to give a reasonable all right. answer. What's all the right. other question? <laughs> 
Hold on, Terry. We need to get another thing from you. How uh, Noel eighty one wants to know: Does the passport have a slot for the SQD card? No, it doesn't. I can answer that one for you. One slot, SD. SD, one slot. Well, okay. Make so that you sounds know, like that's SQD. That's a Nikon thing. Yeah, Are they still in business, Terry? I think so. I thought Fuji bought them. <laughs> Just kidding. Just messing with you. Cat sound. Okay. Hey, Terry, I'm, I'm a Nikon guy, so I'm with you. <laughs> you guys are both going down with the ship. Okay, Terry, give us a tip. I just looked it up. They have a 250-gig version of the SSD for only $199. So oh, now that's you good. Get a, you can definitely get a cheaper one if you don't need to back up that much. So that's an SSD for one ninety nine, and it's wireless. And it's wireless. But it only takes an SD card. It only takes an SD card or oh. USB. You can plug your camera in directly if you want. Yeah, you could put. You can't put a card reader in though, can you? I like you couldn't plug in a card know. reader to that USB slot. Okay, Maybe. that's a good gesture. <laughs> I want to. I want to make that a meme. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. All right. All right. Can you give us another tip, Terry? Because we're running out of time. We, we're can't. actually this about is, out of time. This is going to sound like a duh moment. Like, a, of course you would do that, but you'd be surprised how many people don't. So, this is actually a memory card holder that holds, the light's kind of funky on it, that holds um, micro SD cards and the adapter for it. And the reason I got this is because I travel with several micro SD cards. These are for the drone. Because. You can you you never hear a photographer come back from a shoot and say, you know what? I wish I didn't have all those cards with me. <laughs> because something happened to one, and gosh darn it, I was able to just put pop another one in, or one filled up, and I didn't have to erase. So my tip to any photographer is, cards are dirt cheap. Carry extra cards. Carry fast cards. Carry cards that have a decent capacity on them. They don't have to be super large. And if you're a drone pilot, it's even more imperative. So imagine you take your drone with you. You're on some amazing location. You fly it a few times. You capture all this footage on one car, and then it flies away or falls into a waterfall or does something else crazy. You've lost the entire thing. You've lost all your footage. So what I recommend that people do is as you bring it down and pop a new battery in it because you ran out of juice, that's a good time to also pop a new memory card into it. All right, very good, T. All right, we're, we're going to have to bounce out of here in a second. Any last tips? I'll, I'll, I'll throw the Kuna for that one. All right. Last tip. All right. Terry, thank you very much for being on the show. It's always nice to see you. I know you're up in the mountains right now, and it's very cold where mm -hmm. you're at. And, of course, the wind comes whipping in through that, uh, that the valley. hole in your stairway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to we're gonna have to talk about this background one day, Terry, because your mountains are casting a drop shadow onto your staircase. Well, you look at the window, actually, the frame of the windows was cast, cast in the drop shadow. Oh, it's a window. Yeah. Wow. Now, Terry, I, I've been to your house before, and I, I don't, I guess I was there the wrong time of year. I didn't show, dude, I didn't show you the view. No, I, I, I didn't. Didn't look like. Yeah, there was less snow in the mountains there in Atlanta. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you, that's Terry. Up, yeah, that's up near Blue Ridge up there. Oh yeah, that's yeah, definitely Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge. You can tell. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Terry, thank you for for stopping in with us. It was awesome. Thank you for all your great tips. All right, Mr. Kuna, you, we're all going to wrap up with one. There goes my thing. All right, oh, okay. we're all going to wrap up. Mr. <laughs> Kuna, go. Um, you know, for photographers, what they need to know, uh, you know, and I found this a lot, you know, is the one thing that I think photographers could really benefit from knowing more of is Photoshop and Lightroom. It just is such a powerful tool. I mean, if you don't know about Photoshop and Lightroom and everything it can do, I mean, that's really the difference between a lot of, uh, you know, when you're taking photography and you want to go from, from good to great, 
it's usually the post and Photoshop and Lightroom are the they're the pro, they're the programs to get you can get very deep with it. You know, especially Photoshop. I mean, there there isn't a thing I think that Photoshop won't do. I mean, it, mm. it might take you forever to figure it out, but there's it's just such a deep program. But the more you can know about Photoshop, the more you can know about Lightroom, that's going to help your photography a lot. So that'd be my tip. Right, can I add on to your tip? Yeah, yeah. So I, I would recommend this, and I was going to recommend it anyway, but now that you're talking about that, I, I would, everybody out there, go download Lightroom for your mobile device. Oh, yeah. Here's why. You don't have to sync it. You don't have to, you know, do all that stuff. You can just use Lightroom to edit your images on mobile. My guess is you're using some other program. You mm -hmm. might be using Apple's photo app to do it or whatever. But when you open it, you're going to be surprised how far it's come. And you're going to look at the editing and it's going to be... you can go, yeah. It's mm -hmm. going to be tint, temperature, exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights, whites, blacks, clarity, dehaze, all the same stuff that you're used to on the desktop. All the stuff, the adjustment brush, the radial filter, the graduated filter, all of that stuff, sharpening, presets, the new profiles, every bit of it is in there. You're just using your finger. The sliders look the same and the whole, you are gonna be shocked and, and you're gonna ask yourself, why aren't, why am I using one thing on the desktop and a completely different program that I don't know as well I would do that. Now well, I'm gonna come shoot back. DNG on your phone too. Yeah, you know? let's just shoot yep. it raw. It's got a great built-in camera. Go download it. All right, it doesn't cost you anything. All right, now I'm gonna go to Eric and I'm gonna come back and wrap up with my mega tip. <laughs> mega tip. Eric, All I right. like that. Um, well, one of the tips that I always try and get across, especially to like assistants that are just coming out of school and that, and is uh, take your time. Really take your time. Because I think a lot of times when we're, uh, you know, starting out on something, you're real anxious, and you, and especially when you're working with talent or people or that, people get a little anxious about doing that um, when they're just starting out. And so really take your time. And the other, the other part of that is look beyond the subject. Because sometimes we're so concentrated on our subject yep. that you don't realize what's going on in the background. You know, it kills and, more shots than anything. Oh my goodness! And so you know, uh, make sure you take the time to work with your subject or work with your camera, and then of course, look beyond that subject that you that you're trying to line up on because you know you get a branch sticking out of a head or a car that you didn't realize was passing and it kills by, the shot. and it just kills. Oh, yeah, unless you know yeah. Photoshop real well, yeah. and then you can. Usually the, the foreground know, will take care of itself. It's the background that kills right. more shots exactly, in the foreground. Exactly, exactly. Great so tip. take a take a breath. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Yeah. Great tip. Absolutely. All right. Hey, I do I'm gonna give one last tip before I do I want to tell you where to go win our great stuff. All right. Go to uh, kelby1.com slash contest. It is important you tell us what you want to win. Your choices are Scott's brand new Lightroom Classic book. By the way, Johan asks a very poignant question. Is there only going to be a hardcover version or also an ebook? There will be an ebook version. It will be released immediately almost. So the ebook version comes out before the print book. It should be coming out any day at your local Amazon. Wow, it's so little. <laughs> we'll be coming out at Amazon first. And so I expect it literally any day. All right, so you have to say, do you want to win Scott's book? Do you want to win the small platypod, the big platypod? So it's either the Max or the Ultra. Or do you want to win the light? Now, tell, tell us a, a little bit more about the light. The light itself is an LED light. LED. You can use it for video. 5,500 Kelvin. Or video or still. Stills. Absolutely. It has a built-in speed, speed ring. ring, so you can attach almost and it spins, any softbox. It spins, so you can go from vertical to horizontal almost right instantaneously. On it. Yeah, right on there. And it comes with a set of barn doors. Correct. And it and comes with a dome. And a case. And Someone is winning all of it. the tether tool wrap. And your, the tether tool wrap. Your power brick, yeah. Son of a gun. And that's from F.J. Westcott. F.J. Westcott. Hey, wh one of the things that I think Westcott does best, and you've heard me talk about this and brag about this, is the rapid boxes. I yes. show them on my tour. I use them in the studio. Uh, I use them mostly for my hot shoe flash stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, in mm -hmm. my flash, in, in the book that I did called The Flash Book, I featured them. It is the only soft boxes that I use now for flash. Is, great. Is those, I mean, the great. rapid boxes are the best made easiest to use especially if you're new and you're like i'm not so sure about these things you assemble that box in 15 seconds mm -hmm. it has Absolutely. a little rod and a stick and you put it on there 
And we and have you put the front and, on. And we have some new shapes coming out. New shapes. So yeah, look for that very very Ooh. soon. Anyway, those are those nice. are the best. Go check them out at you get them on, at of course B and H or at uh, FJ. It's FJ Westcott. FJ Westcott. The website is not Westcott. FJ Westcott.com. Yeah, yep. FJ Westcott.com. So thank you for being on there and thank you for making this wonderful gift Absolutely. available. Absolutely. All right, pleasure. my last tip. My last tip. It's my last tip. Last tip of love. This is a very simple one. I want you to think about this. You know people that take selfies, right? Everybody mm -hmm. knows. Me. Rich, you ever take a selfie? <laughs> no. No. Never. What? Never. So what is the proper way to take a selfie? Ask anybody. Not to take one? Like, nope, up selfie. high like this. Everyone. You, everybody that knows how to take a selfie. Juan, up high. Go. Speaking of Juan, can we look at Juan's Instagram page? Because I believe that you will see. There we go. Boom. All right, look. Juan only needs four more followers to break 700. Now, we're going for 1,000. But number one, look at some of Juan's photography. The guy can shoot. All right, guys, scroll down. Scroll down a little, and you'll look. There's selfie. The selfie. There you go. Where's the angle from? Oh, hi. Right? Right there. Boom. Look at the selfie. Mm -hmm. watch, watch your cursor. All right. <laughs> but anyway, it's from up high. That is the official way. Now, here comes a question. Why do we do this? Why do we hold our camera for selfies up high at an angle? Because it looks better, because people look better. In the studio, we have a thing. You can buy them at B&H. They're made by Matthews. They are called Apple boxes. And what they are, are they are wooden boxes. They're this high, this high, this high, and you can stack them. And the idea is to get above eye level for a more pleasing look. I know photographers that have built entire like platforms to get up on, mm -hmm. to shoot up mm -hmm. high and to get that angle. So my, my Uber technique of the day is shoot from a high angle. It is a more flattering angle for people. The less like a model they look, the higher you need to go. <laughs> so for me, I attach yeah. this to the jib to where you can't even tell it's a human. <laughs> and then I, then I yell fire and it auto uh, voice activates. Anyway, that was just a joke, of course. But so don't really get it higher, how, depending on how they look. But don't shoot at eye level with your phone. Shoot mm -hmm. up high and keep that in mind when you're shooting and photographing people. Be at least at their eye level, if not higher, mm -hmm. to get a more pleasing look. Now, there is a threshold, though. There is a threshold in which they look weird. I'll be going like way up <laughs> here. I'll be though. going. All right. Cheeky Nano wants to know when's that New York City class coming out? I don't know. Do you know? That's a good idea. I don't know. I'll it's coming out. out sometime soon. It's, uh, I, I'm doing a series. I've done a series of, of uh, classes called A Photographer's Guide to London, to Paris, to Rome, to Venice, to New, and now New York City. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can see when it's coming out. Yeah, the internet is so fast the here. The internet is not fast here. Hold on. We'll see where we're at. Oh, it's looking like it's a ways. Is that it? Yeah. Six six eighteen. Ooh, another Ooh. month. Another month or so. We got a lot of classes in the yeah. Queue. We got a lot of classes in the. We've been we, we've been taping we, like mad. Yeah, in fact, Terry White's got a class. Terry White's out. got a class coming out. Who doesn't, right? Yeah. So. Then Brett and Irene, Luce, and Peter Terry, Hurley, Brett, Irene, Luce, yeah, Daniel Gregory, Brett Dave Malley, Clayton, yeah, I Mimo. Mean, yeah, you got tons of people. All kinds of cool people. All right, we're going to answer a couple last questions. We're out of here. Uh, uh, Gary asks, I'm from, the, I'm from the Philippines. In landscape photography, are there settings where you don't always use an ND filter? I only use an ND filter if there's going to be water or I'm doing architectural photography. But in landscape photography, the only time I put an ND filter on there is when I'm trying to get a long exposure. So I only use an ND filter if I'm shooting a waterfall for landscape or... A trying stream. to introduce motion. Yeah, I'm trying to make it the water look silky. Yes. Because there's already motion if there's a, if there is a uh, waterfall or a stream or something like well, that. Yeah. But yeah, you're trying to so it won't just freeze it. Right. You're I wanting want to it freeze to run. It. And I introduce. want it to be silky. You could do the same thing with clouds though, where you could make the clouds right. kind of stream out. A little so bit uh, if you yeah, if you to. look at any of the long, like look on on Instagram today, I posted a picture. 
Uh, here, I'll, I'll pull it up real quick on Instagram. And it is a long exposure. In fact, I, I did two long exposures back to back to back. Let's take a look. That's not me. Hold on. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's a long exposure. Love that shot. Now, I, this is a travel shot, but I wanted the water to be silky. The water's very choppy and stuff and all. I wanted it to be silky. Same thing here in New York, right? It's the river, mm -hmm. and it's got boats going through it, and it's super choppy. I wanted it to be smooth. It also has an effect on the sky. The sky starts to streak mm -hmm. because of mm -hmm. it. But it wasn't a very long exposure. It was like a couple of minutes or something. It wasn't too long mm -hmm. ago. Eric was with me. Eric was yeah, standing right beside. Yeah, I think right that was a minute and 50 seconds. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like that, that long. So anyway... That's there was the, a boat uh, that came in there, but you don't see it. Yeah, there was a huge boat that came yeah. through, like a big ferry or something, but you don't see it because mm -hmm. the thing was open so long. Well, my friends, it's long past time to say goodbye, but I want to thank Eric Egley for being on here. My pleasure, Where can sir. people go learn more about you as a photographer? Uh, EricEggleyPhotography.com. EricEggleyPhotography.com. Are you on, like, social media? Well, I'm, I'm on Facebook. It's sort of half professional half uh personal oh, don't, don't don't check me out oh. on instagram though I, i've deleted everything and i'm you starting deleted, over on that start yeah, over so. on the gram yep. he's starting over <laughs> on the gram there you go <laughs> all right rocket man you're on instagram go oh and, yeah and eric's got three thousand nine hundred and fourteen followers yeah i've been uh, dude you've been growing yeah. your rocket eric shots are Kuda. taking off yeah, people love these rocket shots. Well, they so. also, they really like the plotographs. Those are getting yeah. great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the didn't, plotographs. Hey, uh, didn't Elon Musk like one of your photos yeah, here he last week? Yeah, one of the right? oh yeah. right, there awesome. you go. There Elon you Musk go. liked it, so. Yeah, and I started to get into some of this where I'm doing some artistic stuff with Photoshop, like with the rockets. Like, that's a sketch in Photoshop. And it's then I did this one. Sketch. With, like it's a Artistic watercolor. Key. So just mm -hmm. trying to do different things. All right. Well, that's cool. That was one of my tips that we never got to is experiment. Experimentato. Experiment. Well, also, you're true to your brand there. Everything's a rocket. But if I'm still mm -hmm. pushing it outside. I'm trying to start trying to go outside but keep with, within the rocket right. thing. But, mm -hmm. but see, if, mm -hmm. you, if you send a, a sketch of a rocket, I'm still okay with it because I yeah, followed yeah. you because of rockets. Oh, people love that, actually. Mm -hmm. I got more engagement on the, the different types of stuff than, you know, the, the regular shots. But you're right. It just has to stick within right. that now, rocket thing. Now, if I see a picture of Eric, like, having dinner at sunset or something, unfollow. Which now, doesn't ever and, happen. And, and it doesn't happen because he's <laughs> smart about it. But I'm Eric's friend and still uh, unfollow. I'm like, I don't want to see Eric at sunset. <laughs> I expect to see Eric in, 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 under only office lighting. <laughs> that was kind of funny. funny. All right. Rachel, wonderful job today on the commenting. Layton, your camera work was sublime. Juan, you were occasionally here. Jason, I don't know what the hell's going on in that control room. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, Eric, Eric and Terry White, wherever you are, thank you guys. And we'll see you next week right here on the beautiful grid. Hey, there's oh. Terry. Is that a still oh, he's or is that still, yeah, he's frozen. <laughs> no, he's, he's frozen in time. <laughs> yeah. A frozen Terry is a happy Terry. Uh, oh, funny.